a question was asked on the forum the other day if they could substitute 270 picofarad capacitors in the low pass filter instead of 220 picofarads. So let's just try that out. I've done the simulation with some software and it actually showed that it would be better with 270s than with the 220s that the circuit originally calls for. We're going to test it a couple different ways, so let's get started. We're running a symmetrical suite from 10 megahertz at this side of the scope to 20 megahertz at this side, so this would be 15 megahertz. We're putting in about a tenth of a volt into a version 3 amplifier, and we're getting about a little over 5 volts out. We can see right up here just past 16 megahertz it starts to roll off and continues on down. Actually we really wouldn't mind if it rolled off back in here at 15 megahertz that started rolling off because anything over the 14, 14 350 we don't care we could start rolling off of 14 400 and not bother us so we may be able to change something and by adding larger capacitors in there, it should bring this roll-off point down in frequency. Let's look at it one other way. Looking on the oscilloscope is kind of deceptive because it displays in linear fashion where the spectrum analyzer and most of our other measurements we want to talk in dBs. So we want to talk log logarithmically. So we're going to take a look at the spectrum analyzer and it's calibrated 10 dB for division vertically and right now we're 1 megahertz per division so this is 10 megahertz, 15 megahertz, this is 20 megahertz. So we have a continuous wave form going in there so let's decrease the frequency and see what happens. There's 14 megahertz, 13, 12, 11 and 10. So we don't see much changing as we go that long that way. So let's increase. As we increase 15, 16, and now that's 17. So between 16 and 17, we start decreasing and then we're going to roll off. And down here, we're 15 dB down at uh, 20 megahertz. So we saw before between 16 and 17 that a little past 16 it started rolling off. Well, it doesn't, we don't see a whole lot of change right here where we're at. Let's, let's zoom in on that if I can and we'll see if we can look at it a little bit better. This is about as good as I can get. I'm at 15 megahertz. We're starting to roll off a little bit there and at 17 megahertz it looks like we're down maybe 5 dB or so. One thing to remember is this little roll off right here doesn't look like much but 6 dB is half voltage so by the time I get down here that's probably 6 dB down so my voltage would have dropped off to half on the oscilloscope. So we can see our filter is fairly flat until we get out above 16, between 16 and 17 megahertz. And we actually are down about 15 dB when we get to 20 megahertz. So let's go ahead and change the capacitors now. Okay, we have our capacitors changed and none of the amplitudes, well I haven't changed any of the generator or any other settings. so. What we notice now is we've got a little bit of a dip here we didn't have before. I don't think we're getting quite as much voltage out. We'll go raise that up so we can measure it at 15 megahertz. At 15 megahertz I'm getting 5.2 volts out. So it didn't hurt anything, it didn't look like. Might have lost just a little bit of amplitude, but it's, it's hard to say. We didn't lose a whole lot. 
So let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer, see what it says. Okay, we're back to our 15 megahertz, and when we go back down frequency, we can see we did roll off just a little bit going down to 15 megahertz. Let's go on above. Remember before it was about 16.8 or so we started rolling off. Here we're starting to roll off now around a little over 16. So at 15 megahertz we're at that point. Let's go down. This I do like a little more. Before I had 15 dB attenuation at 20 meg. And now I've got 20 dB of attenuation. So it rolled off a little faster on the high end. So I think I may leave it in there and try it, try it out. It certainly doesn't seem to hurt anything. So if you don't have the 220s, the 270s probably ought to work also. I'm at 14,250 and we're putting in 100 millivolts in and we're getting about 5.2 volts out. If we take 5.2 and divide it by 0.1 volts, take the logarithm of that and multiply it by 20, we'll end up with a gain at this point and that calculates out to be 34 dB. Let's go ahead and uh, drive the amplifier a little bit harder. So we'll go take it to a half a half a volt to drive in, and we'll see what it gives us out. There's about a half a volt in. and we're getting 30 volts out so we're not quite to 4, four watts. 4 watts would be 4 to 40 volts. So let's give it a little more gain. We gave it a little more input. Now we're not quite 8 tenths of a volt in. And we're getting over four watts out. So let's take it up to a volt, volt drive in. And with the volt of drive in, I'm getting about 48 volts out. I'm going to turn it off and we'll do some calculations. I had to add a little fan cooling because we were uh, getting the heat sink warm and I just ran a calculation for the gain and we still have 33 dB of gain so we're not hitting any compression point and if we take the 48 volts take half of that to convert peak to peak to peak so we have 24 times 0.707. That's 1696. We're going to square that. Well, divide it by 50 ohms. That says we got 5.75 watts out. Let's see if we can drive it a little harder. Let's take it to two volts drive. Here's two volts drive. And we have about 54 volts of output. So if I take 54 divided by 2, 
is 27. Take the log of 27, multiply it times 20. That gets, says we got 38.6 dB of gain. So we're hitting compression now. So we probably don't want to drive it quite that hard. Let's drop back to the volt and a half drive and run the calculation again. There's a volt and a half of drive. And I'm getting 50 volts out. So if we take our volt and a half of drive and we have 50 volts output run through the dB calculations, we got 30.45 dB again. So we're still getting a little bit of compression. So let's drop it back down to maybe a volt and a quarter of drive. Okay, I've dropped it back to 1.2 volts of drive. I get about 48 volts out. So we run that calculation and I've got 32 dB again. So this would be pretty safe to run it at this point. You get just a little bit of compression but not, in, not a whole lot. So if we run the power calculation now I've got 48 volts of output so convert, that's peak to peak, convert to peak, so that's 24 volts times 0 0.707. We're going to square that, divide it by 50, and that's 5.75 watts out. I'm running about plus 20 volts on the IRF 510. I don't have an easy power supply to connect up to give it a little more, but if we were to give it a little bit more voltage, it would probably put out a little more power before it hit its compression. One other thing our filter is supposed to do for us is knock out the harmonics and so that we don't pass too much crud out onto the antenna. This is zero here. Here's our 14 megahertz signal. Here's the second harmonic down here. So we can see it's 10, 20, 30, 40. It's about 43, 44 dB down. And there really isn't any other harmonic content. So the amplifier is actually running pretty clean and if we drive it harder let's take it up to the two volts of drive that we had before that's actually more than that's three volts of drive so it really didn't do too much to us you got an extra harmonic here but we still are over 40 dB down so Actually, the amplifier and the low-pass filter are pretty much doing their job. Driving it harder really doesn't change much. See, once you get past this point, we start hitting a little compression. You see it come up fast until it gets right about to there. And at that particular point, it is about almost a volt. So. Until we get over a volt, we don't have a whole lot of compression. There's some, but the amplifier actually looks pretty clean. I have a muffin fan blown on the heat sink. We can take a look. And it's running 180 some degrees. I don't have the fancy infrared one with the laser tells me what I'm pointing at but a little over 180 degrees but I'm still moving a pretty good amount of air over it but also I've been running a steady almost six watts on it for the last five to ten minutes so if you want to push it all you got to do is get a bigger heat sink and run a fan on it
joy you and he will be waiting. 